Hello everybody and welcome to Music Real Talk with Marvin. If you like what you're hearing, please subscribe. That's right. Episode 32 of Music wow. Real Talk with Marvin. And we are here. Eight Great. months. Is it really? Not Has it really. been that long? It's a little bit less. That's fucked up. That's a very long time. We have a lot to talk about today. Uh, we always have a lot to talk about, and when we don't usually even get to what we want to talk about. Well, today we're going to get to some of what we want to talk about, I can guarantee it. Okay, let me start right on it. Okay. Chickens are evolved from dinosaurs. The right. question is, did dinosaurs taste like chicken? <laughs> <laughs> did the taste stay the same throughout the years? <laughs> that, is a, that is certainly an issue uh, worth exploring. <laughs> I mean, I would guess, I would guess somewhat, but they probably were like ripped, so yeah. uh, it's probably very lean meat. So free, but chickens, free range chickens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, science. It's, uh, yeah, moment of science. <laughs> we should start the shows with a moment of science. Uh, so, I want to talk for a second about uh, a video you sent me that You're I welcome. found. Yeah. Danny found a, a video of Michael League's new song. For those of you who don't know Michael League, I love you. Um, but, uh, you know, it's the guy from Snarky Puppy. It's the, the bassist, little. It's the mind, leader. the mind and soul behind Snarky Puppy. The mind and soul. And, uh, yeah, he was uh, certainly shirtless and wearing a potato sack and doing a lot of uh, strange thing in this music, like 90s style music video that he produced for one of his songs. And it was amongst the most cringy experiences I've had in the last year. Actually, I thought about it a lot, so I'm, I'm a little bit confused about my feelings. And I mean, it, I don't know about the music. I, I have no opinion about it. I actually remember zero things from it. I remember there was a piano riff and he was singing and there was kind of, I don't know what the song was about. It I seemed just like that one person said, it's amazing that it's only piano and vocals and it's not mm-hmm. only piano and vocals that's the one thing that I'm <laughs> 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 it just <laughs> I'm saying it okay let's say you can't hear bass let's say you're white but it's still you can hear a drum beat <laughs> yeah uh, it was to me it seemed like the most expensive cry for help I've seen in my entire life uh, I, other than that I just don't know I don't. I don't know what to say about it. Uh, I mean, it was. It was insanity. I. I, I have stuff to say, but I just. I don't know how I really feel about it. So I'm gonna. I can. Ex- we can explore it, and you can. Let's explore it. Let's. Can, yeah, I'll help. help I'll help you with your feelings. Let's navigate your feelings. Okay. First. First thing that came to mind was obviously I feel like uh, peeling my face off. It's right. <laughs> That's from from what thing. from what feeling? Why, it's what, just why weird. W- it's just strange. It's just strange. You see somebody. It's not like I know him. But it's just... You, you YouTube know him. You yeah. know what he's supposed to be. Yeah, it's just, oh, what is he doing? But I was like, why? That's what I felt thing, feeling. And then uh-huh. I was thinking about how when you are a musician and you've been through some stuff, right? It, so uh, the problem is that I'm not a snarky fan, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but let's... Ass- let's <laughs> I don't like the music, but let's, ass- but let's give it it's do it's like some stuff it's not like we don't know what we're doing okay we don't they know did something very well they did some, what they tried to do they did very well and we also do have our own sound right yeah it's like I know where we're coming from but everybody comes from somewhere so it's we do have our own sound we did create something we did work out for it so I will give them that uh, that credit where credit's due yeah, type exactly thing. yeah but then so to me, if you know how to do something and you learn how to do something just from doing it, mm-hmm. you can very easily create 
go out of your realm and still make it poss- possible. So, I'll, I'm trying to... You know, the thing that I was talking about uh, maybe two weeks ago, about where your edge of your knowledge, the edge of your mm-hmm. knowledge about music, that you under- even if you understand a lot about your music and a lot about other people's other people music, there is some sort that you, there is some point that it's com- completely in the dark, the, sure. the magic part. So, if somebody like me, for example, and I do it all the time, as you know, in the van, but somebody like me takes a song, I can make a song in any style. Right. Right, and I, write the, I make up the lyrics on the spot. Right. About, a lot of times it's about smoking every day, about legalizing it. You know, sometimes it's <laughs> that, about that's, the That's moon. on a jam band kind of day, but I've yeah. seen you rap about some hard stuff too. Yeah, I rap about some hard stuff. Sometimes I go metal and talk about the moon and the blood that's flowing. I, a lot of stuff. I, I have a lot of stuff that I <laughs> sing about. Country, I wrote the song, uh, I've, I'm falling for the load and I can't get up. Yeah, I remember. I don't La- remember lots, of, lots of hits through the years. Yeah, I just remember. Yeah, I remember what I'm You wrote the, ja- the Japanese pop. Uh, Jesus is really makes me feel like a lady. Yeah. Jesus is real. Jesus is real. He makes me feel like a lady. He came from Japan. Japan. I am his man. He's, He's my, my baby. baby. <laughs> yeah. It was great. Oh, the other way around. Never mind. And yeah. then there was something with Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi yeah. Oh, the way my mom <laughs> said it, Mitsubishi. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. It was so, great. So I have a lot of songs like that. But the, yeah. the point is that I can actually get away with a lot of stuff just because of the stuff that I do know about music. I can, you know, the areas that I don't know about certain styles, I can fake them pretty well. And that's what I thought about him. He knows about production. Mm-hmm. And he, knows, he does. And he knows it about... Sound, it sounds pro. Exactly. And the lyrics, you, you look at the lyrics and you're like, yeah, it's just, it sounds like lyrics of that style. So right. it's hard to put the thing, your finger on, but what's not working? I actually can put my finger on right, what's not working, go personally. Ahead. Well, I mean, I thought the song was fine. The fact that he made a video of himself shirtless with a piano with thumbtacks upside down and a worm on it was also okay. But then when he was just doing the emoting through the face with a potato sack on him and then his face all tied up like a Lady Gaga video. Yeah, that's but what it's, it's reminding but me, it's the But it's the bassist for Snarky a fusion puppy. band. And you're just looking at him like, oh, dude. Oh, dude. And then I was like, on my, you know, on the live feed, I said, like, this is why, this is a, if this is proof of anything, is that the people, like, you see a Snarky Puppy video and they're like a huge group like there's like you know i don't know it looks like 70 people in the band and then 150 people that somehow they got in a room with headphones which is impressive i can't get like those that amount of people at a show you know it's like but they get them like you know to sit there with headphones for their videos uh so it looks like they do have friends but they don't have one one real friend that would tell them ah uh, i don't know michael yeah so, so i don't know i don't know michael that's like you, this this is kind of uh is, are you okay? Like, I saw an unnamed person that said that uh, when it comes to friends, it's better to have four quarters than a hundred cents. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's exactly that. Uh, you know, because on, on the live feed, I was addressing this in Kettner. I was like, oh, don't talk about Michael. He's my friend. And, and I was like, and, and, you know, and I told, I told, I, yeah, well, I told Steve and I was like, this, some friend you are, you know what I mean? Like a real friend would watch that video and give him a call and be like, Michael, I'm not sure. I'm not, this, this is, you might, this is, might, might be something you regret in a year or two. You remember how I was explaining to John forever until he got to the point? That I would, what? That I gave him shit for talking nonsense in the van and I was like, and I told him, it's like, that's because I care about you. You, you were going to make a fool out of yourself repeating the things to other people. So right. I, I help it's you. A, I help you know what, yeah, what doesn't work. Yeah, you saved you. Yeah. You interpreted reality when, when, when all of his defenses were down. You know what I'm guessing is happening to Michael League? But John he, got it. That's, that's why, yeah, I know. why John is in the band so long, because he got it. I understand. But you, uh, my, my take on what's happening to him is that he is spending a lot, now that he's won some Grammys, he's spending a lot of time inside uh, the Hollywood kind of music production machine. And, uh, really? Really? Yeah, I feel I'm, I feel like that's the connections and the people he's making, and they're in, it's like you need to be more artsy and uh, like it's, more it, cunning it, edge. It's tough to tell from the outside because you can tell <laughs> a lot of stories. Like if I have to tell, if I have to make up a story on the spot, 
I would say maybe that in Snarky is really taking a back seat as far as exposure. Like he, he, and here it's like me, the entire video is me, look at me. You know? I feel like that's the kind of aesthetic decisions that you start making after you have like a hundred impossible burgers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Something in that Bill Gates made meat. <laughs> yeah, it's like nothing is impossible. So, you know, but I'm saying, so also, so to me in the beginning it was like, okay, just stay, stay in your lane, right? After saying it. Right. And then... I was thinking about us making a Gypsy Jazz album. I was like, is it really the same? Yeah, we fucking shred. That's the like, point. It doesn't, feel like it's the, like, it doesn't feel like it's the same for us to do. It feels like, to me, I feel like I stayed in my lane in Gypsy Jazz. Like, Listen, man, has to do I actually think shredding. he stayed in his lane musically. Really? I think he stayed, I, I, think, I think so. I mean, I, I did not have more disdain for this than I had for a snarky song. We say, that's, that's the issue. But then I was thinking about the guy who didn't like Whiskey Chaser. And I was like, well, who am I to judge him? It's like, I don't like any of his music specifically, so really, who am I to judge him? But even if you like his music and you don't like this song, it's like, whatever, yeah. he likes it, do it. But I don't know, it just, it's weird. I'm okay with people trying to cross over. I'm okay with people going from jazz to songwriting. Uh, there, is, there is a little bit of, uh, that transition is tricky because, uh, you know, it's easy to do it with a lot of hubris. It's like, you know, like, uh, Oh, you think you, you're, you think you know how to write songs, Nine Inch Nails? <laughs> you don't even know about sharp nine chords. Yeah, so for, <laughs> exactly. Check out, check out the sharp 11 on this. And exactly. then it's like, uh, we don't do it because it doesn't sound good in this context. You know, it's, like, it's not that these people are morons, even though many of them are. Yeah. Uh, well, 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 morons, come on. You know, but yeah, yeah. But um, I think it's just that a lot of them just don't, um, you know, are not interested in the aesthetic and the core and the harmonic vocabulary of jazz for a reason there's a certain kind of uh any style is defined by what you don't do yeah. you know there's there's always there's always a wall around anything um anything worthwhile you know that's what a style is it's it's a set of things that you do and a set of things uh you don't do you know It's yeah, amazing. You know, uh, there's a, I'm not a big fan of that philosopher Rousseau, but he did say that civilization started when people learned how to build fences. Uh, which is, and there's a, there's a lot to that, you know, and, and, yeah. and that's how styles are born. You know, you fence, uh, you fence in certain sounds and you fence out uh, other ones. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, a lot of, uh, and a lot of what's happening right now, especially with like uh, people, graduates from music schools, Is that they're like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go offenses. into hip-hop. <laughs> 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 yeah, but it, it, it's, actually, it's actually that. It's, it is tearing down something. It's like we're going to go in there, and with the tools we've acquired from, you know, Harmony 3 class, uh, we're going to renovate hip-hop. You know, we're going to innovate. Well, you can there. see it because you're like, oh, dude, hip-hop is so boring. What if I put quintuplets in there? And poly rhythms, and I put like different code structure and stuff like that. Like maybe it would work. I don't know. Uh, yeah. But it it's, it, it's, it's, you know what it is? Because it's what is, it's supposed to be like street poetry, and it's like literally like aesthetic gentrification. Yeah. <laughs> These people walking in there with their fucking macchiatos be like, oh, that's so primitive. <laughs> How about some sus chords, huh? Yeah, but it, it is weird. It's a, again, the style that I don't like, punk. You can't get Dennis Chambers and Gary, uh, Gary Willis to, be, to play punk. That would be amazing, actually, it if you do. It won't work. It won't work. Right. It's going to sound like mean, a bigger joke than it's not like, what it is. It'll be like Chivo Tech, you know. <laughs> God save the queen. <laughs> 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 yeah, that'd be pretty great. Um, you know, I've, I've been looking at painters. Uh, mm-hmm. for our stuff, for our uh, Gypsy Jazz album yeah. cover, because Wynn can do it. And that's one of the things about style that I, I don't get, because Janas sh- showed me all those painters that she follows on Instagram, mm-hmm. and some of them do portraits, like hyper-realism portraits, and I don't understand it. It's like, isn't it the same painting over and over? Just a different face? The way you do it. I mean, I'm guessing it's probably very similar. 
like I feel a lot, like could, a lot could be said about fusion that you know isn't exactly, that exactly that's exactly what I was thinking I was like am I doing the same thing over and over it doesn't feel like it to me but maybe to them it doesn't feel like it either but to yeah. me it's definitely feel like it just to see a face 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 well yeah I mean there's a certain kind of distance you can have from a thing uh, where you're like it's just when everything so is the you, same yeah you say it, if, if, if you accept if you like kind of uh, make the the leap that uh, certain things inside the subject are all the same like oh it's, you're just playing on chords oh like saxophone solo for a lot of people every saxophone solo is the same they don't have a different right. saxophone solo right right so but yeah I mean that, that's really the when you're starting to think about the mentality of pinheads you know what I mean like the way that you look at art or I look at art uh, compared to the way you or I look at music like yeah. how it breaks up into inf- infinite compartments I mean that's really the real th- good thing about art you know and the real thing about having a great experience listening to music like the the thing that people don't get is that the most amazing things happen to you if you actually let a song do its thing inside you like listening to Col- getting what Coltrane gives for the first time or for this or even for the 10,000th time but especially in the beginning it's a transformative thing internally it's like there's a chemical process almost happening inside you the, the moment you get it you know what I mean it's it's crazy but yes but on the other hand there is some people in music that are really repetitive oh sure 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 I mean I would say there there are more that than the other thing You know, there, there are a few people who actually change with time um, right, so in, today, in, in a big way. Yeah, so today I was listening to, there's a new Shalom Hanoch album that just came out. That's an Israeli singer, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> And that made me also think about Michael Lee, because it just, it wasn't good at all. Uh-huh. But they've done so many albums, him, it was him and uh, the people that he works with all the time, which won't say uh-huh. anything. And it's just, so we know how to make albums together, mm-hmm. but the songs were just not good. Yeah. And we're lazy. I don't know what happens to people when we're old, but we think that doing melodies with this rhythm, da 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 Uh, th- this is this is a guy who wrote the most intricate pop music prop pretty much ever right it's like there's no if you co- it's totally the upper echelon cross country cross anything like you know certainly more than American pop uh, probably at the level of Br- some sort of combination of Brazilian rhythm with uh, with real you know European type um, harmony and classical kind of piano and uh, great songs the most complicated you can get away with while still delivering a pop song and this is in the 70s and now he's just writing the simplest shit and it's ama- it, it, you just you wouldn't imagine it's the same person just in terms of like the melodic content of what he's doing yeah so I don't get it yeah I don't know we should ask our parents <laughs> if <laughs> write a melody yeah Yeah, just ask your dad if, if when you get if you turn 65 you all of a sudden just go back to do Newton mechanics <laughs> yeah <laughs> just your phys- your physics like gets just, real basic yeah you're like go huh? how when would the train arrive <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah start counting on your fingers I don't I don't if think it, that's if, what if, your, if your dad is like oh my god who cares about DNA RNA let let people want to get places in time. <laughs> when the train leaves and right. ac- accelerates and when, how when does the light the break station? here yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's right um, yeah another thing that happened to me this week is that uh, a student of a student I was hired to give a consult by his mother on whether he should go to Berkeley and we had like a 30 minute conversation and uh It was amazing. It was amazing. He, he was debating whether he should go to Berkeley or to a school in Asheville for uh, production and engineering. <laughs> should I eat myself 
in the balls with a five pound hammer or 20 pounds hammer and you're like don't eat yourself in the balls it's like no I have to it's like okay five <laughs> my mom wants me to hit myself in the balls with a hammer and uh, and I just I can't hang out with my balls just you know being safe so yeah, it's five or twenty it's five or twenty it's more like 50 or 200 it's like I get five five <laughs> definitely five twenty <laughs> twenty really hurt me <laughs> yeah uh Yeah, but it's really uh it's it's really should I hit myself with a five pound hammer uh or with a twenty pound hammer and then it's like five it's like oh, and uh also, I don't own the hammer, so I have <laughs> to have the go i have to the government <laughs> I have to borrow i have to borrow money for, i have to borrow a twenty pound hammer from the government, but every year it's they're <laughs> they, yeah, they, they take the pay they're, me. <laughs> they're gonna, gonna like hit me. Yeah, it feels like you're gonna hit me for the next 25 years. Yeah, they're gonna hit me every day for 25 <laughs> years, and then they're gonna add a pound every time they hit me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that's the vibe. Uh, so obviously I told him not to go to Berkeley. But the, the reason, I asked him what, what would be his reasonings to go to Berkeley, and he was like, he wants to study production engineering. Well, they have the most like, up-to-date facilities I was like, "You don't know anything about production engineering, and you, you need to work on a board from 2021 instead of like 2018." <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you need, you need the most up-to-date what? Like the, the place in Asheville doesn't have plug-ins. Like what, what, what makes you think that you need like you're, you're, in a, you're 17, you're trying to learn this thing. Why do you need to be in a three million dollar studio? Do you think you're going to a three million dollar studio? <laughs> right after you graduate and you won't know what to do with the machines you can't learn mixing on a on small a mixer yeah right which is what you're gonna do anyway right it's like literally if you're if you're you know what you need to have at berkeley if you're going to be a sound engineer student a barista course you need to learn how to make those fucking hearts because you're going to be making a lot of coffee dude if you get a job it's so crazy to me but people are going for sound engineering it's It's basically you know what it's like it's like dude there are cows horses are nobody rides horses anymore so you shouldn't learn how to ride a horse instead you should learn how to how to make the hooves <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> yeah I mean especially after covid I mean we we made three albums at this point at home uh, yeah. and just paid basically. one mixing guy very little money at the end of the day uh, Not the kind of money you can pay back sc- student loans with you know to to do this thing and and will and will the exception because most people would just mix it themselves yeah, that's the thing you would think like, oh yeah, you guys like you know you know a lot so you're gonna do it. dude, people who know nothing make their own shit you should go on band camp dude band camp is amazing i i I was talking about it before, but I was trying to find some album art. It looks like music recorded on the phone and then. cover is taken with the phone camera like the the amount of nothing no effort no money people invest in their music is appalling well, you, know, from, you know from john when he did his album but he just you know it looks fun looks okay and cheap it's because they don't make the money back so right what's the point there is no point but i'm saying if you are if you're if the job if the future you're planning for yourself is to make albums for people Or even like singles for Spotify, how are you going to make that money back? How like what is the plan here? You know what I mean? So yeah, we, we, we talked about that quite a bit, and uh, I feel like I convinced him to go to, to Asheville, but it was, um, it, was insan- it was insane to me because you know, on, on a lot of levels, you know the, when you're 17 though. I, I kept having to because he sound he had an adult voice or like you know he didn't sound like a child he sounded like yeah. a you know I, I couldn't tell the difference between that seventeen year old and a twenty one but there is a big difference you know what I mean like you know nothing and and his parents or his mom was super sweet sounded like a great a great mom and really su- super encouraging like you do what you want like we're here on your team but like parents to enable your child. To go to the to, to go to these institutions and bury themselves in debt I mean well, they, they do the opposite they actually encourage them to go there but because I know it from my parents my parents when I didn't go to school they you know they really tried to pressure me to do it yeah because because they because their generation were like oh you get a 
you get a deg- at least you have a degree to fall back on <laughs> yeah they're, they're like well yeah you have a berkeley degree it's like you're gonna get hired anywhere i, I kept i keep telling the story when i graduated i needed a job and i applied at guitar center and i got rejected they told and with and i showed the berkeley degree you know they're like yeah, magna cum laude or whatever yeah yeah so that, that wasn't enough to get a job at guitar center because that was competitive and that guitar was, center is going out of business <laughs> yeah this was 2008 right or nine So it's, that's a long time ago. I mean, now there's so many more musicians that, that these institutions have shat onto the workforce. So all the petty jobs, yeah, all the little less, gigs are, are gone. You know, no, there's no less more less work. There's less and less work and more and more musicians. Yeah. So you need to really... And again, if, even if you look at people in our perspective, which are people who give jobs to people, you know, We, can't, we never take people to our band that are buried in debt. We have peop- we've had people that had some debt, but... Uh, almost none, yeah. But almost none. Mo- al- most everybody that was in our band either had no debt or n- didn't go to school or his parents really helped or it was a lot of scholarship. Oh, but scholarship. Oh, just uh, one guy in particular just said, I'm not paying. Yeah. <laughs> our, Jay, our, Jay, our ex-bassist, went to a year in college and was like, nope, not paying. not paying <laughs> he kept sending the bill and he kept saying no and uh he has no credit but he has no bills <laughs> which is amazing i didn't know you can do that that's how i found out um so uh, but but in but in any way in any case um it's totally it i mean for, in our perspective we not because we're mean We can't hire somebody like that because they're going to be too stressed out and yeah, it's going to be terrible stress. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like they're going to like, I need to get paid this, but, but you can't get paid this. That's not what the gig pays, you know, but that's what I need. Yeah, but that's just, yeah, that's just not my, that's the crazy stuff. We just create more and more musicians that are also all the same, too. That's another thing about the musicians they create and, and right. shit out, out, out of the world. It's like we're all the same. We can all do the same stupid coffee shop gigs, not very well. That's right. another thing. Like With a book. Do, They don't even know the songs by yeah, heart. Yeah, we can do a book and play kind of out. Mm-hmm. Like we can't even play pleasant just for coffee shops. But and they create a situation, just a generation of unhirable people for I, actual gigs. I, I remember that John used to play, or wait, we, I don't remember which one of the John, either our John or the previous John, mm. that one of them played in a, in a pit for like a musical. Previous John, yeah. And they paid him, I think, with John too. And they paid him something like 36 bucks. Yeah, 36 night. bucks a night. And they had a bunch of musicians. That's why they call it the pits. Yeah, 36 <laughs> bucks. And they had a bunch of musicians wanting the gig. And it's like when you yeah. get paid 36 bucks, dude, you, you can't get coffee on that gig. There, there, are some, there are some pit gigs. Oh, I think it was our John actually with that gig. Yeah, that's what there I are think. S- there are some pit gigs. That, that pay more money, but it's just the worst, it's the worst kind of gig. I mean, there, I, I really can't think of a, a, like a biggest nightmare than going to read all day, doubling on a lot of instruments, just playing like beyond stupid uh, dude, music. How many people, how many Cirque, Cirque du Soleil gigs you got? How yeah. many Broadway shows you've got? Not that many. No. And those things pay less and less all the time. I guess Broadway mm-hmm. is still stole out all the time, but it pays less and less all the time. And the money doesn't go to the musicians. That's not right. the people that make that money. It's like right. a lot of time we have a famous actor there or whatever. So it's, it's not... And that's the top. If, again, there is just no bottom or middle. Yeah, middle. I mean, uh, uh, I, I, w- I just want to see one... I, every time I meet somebody from that world, they, they're so disgruntled, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like a jaded cop. Yeah. <laughs> what's, the, what's the Bill Burr thing? <laughs> like a jaded cop waiting for retirement. Yeah. Just like doing the minimum, trudging to work. It's like, oh... Oh, it's like, it just looks so crushing. Oh, you the know? Bill Bell thing is about the divorce. I think it was for Michael Jordan oh, or Kobe. Oh, or yeah, with the divorced women that just wait, married to, to, to get to all. Get, to get to the 10 years where we can get all the, yeah. all the benefits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Italian strike, we call that. Uh, you know, when you just um, have this real fucking mentality. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, and, and, and I'm sure their bosses don't even notice. I'm sure that like 
That attitude is fine for the gig. Well, nobody because nobody cares. Everybody has it. Yeah. It's like the music just needs to be there, you know? It's, you're just a part of this machine. It's weird. We were talking in the context of, um, of our, uh, the, the bassist that introduced us. We, that, that came up a lot between us and, uh, lately because we had, we had some sort of, me and him have a falling out every, f- every few years. It's like a, he rekindles the flame just so, oh, just so we can burn the bridge again. Uh, but uh, we just had another falling out and a long chain of falling outs. But I was, think, I was thinking something about the, the mentality that me and Danny had at 20 and change, like just when we were really, really young. 21, that's what you meant. 21. Um, and uh, and what, what it looks like to have the mentality for success as a young adult, right? Right out of college or college age. And it seems to me like, you know, you have to be in such fantasy uh, in one way, because you don't know the world yet, but, but like so driven in another, right? It's like, I think you said like not bluffing, you yeah. know? And, and our, fr- our peers didn't, didn't see it. And it's weird because now it's 15 years down the line. Everybody's an adult and you really get to reap what everybody gets to reap what they sowed and it creates a lot of animus between people because even though we are not uh you know we're more famous than we are rich we are in very different places you know we have we were very prolific in the last 15 years you know we have uh 12 albums out now because i just found audio found out audio tree put out the live one on spotify no, count. <laughs> i know 11 albums uh almost 12 uh the gypsy jazz one's yeah. coming out uh in our career and played thousands of shows and festivals and you know are still making headway you know still still uh we always had the mentality of hard work and drops in a bucket you know everything every little thing you do is one drop in a bucket and i was just i was just remembering when we were in a band with this guy and his name is alad muscatel he loves to be mentioned by name uh and then uh our ex-drummer noah plotkin uh we had a we had a band together called babagaj that was that existed for a summer in israel a precursor of marvin yeah a precursor of marvin exactly and that's where me and danny really started writing together and and uh doing the stuff that would turn out eventually to be marvin and um i just remembered being offered gigs that are not it, it's not even coffee shop gigs it's hard to explain in israel like what kind of gigs they were but we it's we like had the mentality friends that just friends that have a bar or friends that have a cousin that has a, that have a bar exactly and you just set up on like you know on the on the floor and play for like yeah. 10 people or five people um no, actually back in the day we played for a lot of people because that's just yeah the way it is. We, well we had friends yeah we had yeah. friends and family so we could convince them to come and for them it's just yeah because they don't have they don't have anything going on they don't have families yet so they're everybody's just basically hanging out all day yeah, so that's really, the most exciting that's thing that's the other thing that people miss so much that they don't get when we go to college dude you're wasting your time Like you have friends, you have energy, you're young, you can drink all night and wake up like nothing happened. Right. Go on the road now. Well, we're going on the road like in two days and I'm excited about trying drinking all night and seeing if something happens. (laughs) (laughs) It will happen. Uh, But yeah. Yeah. So that's that's kind of a magical, that's a sweet spot uh, in time for that. But I just, I remember back then like do you remember the difference in mentality about playing shows for free yeah and i remember specifically we had a friend named Maury adler and he told him he told the guy dude you just paid i don't know like twenty thousand bucks a year or whatever ten thousand bucks a year doesn't matter and lived in new york and everything to learn how to play it was like so forty thousand like, bucks a year but yeah well, well he had a big scholarship but it, uh-huh. do, it doesn't even matter it's like you paid a lot of money and also living in new york is super expensive and it's like why would you like you're okay with paying all this money to be in, in a classroom instead of like being in the real world and playing for f- so what if it's for free, for free. right yeah, for free free as much as much as much cheaper than paying yeah right so that's what we told him and we couldn't agree on that and it's funny because if I'm looking b- back it's like dude I would I would have played every day I would have just drove and asked people to can I play right now <laughs> until we are done you know what I mean when we are that young 
in Israel. Yeah, even yeah. when we came here, we played a bunch of shit for free for for a long time. We played a ton of shows for free. Yeah, because monthly cause for free, basically weekly, yeah, bi weekly. I mean, or almost free. Yeah. Yeah, like it, enough to pay our sidemen for gas. Dude, it's very weird. That's something that I, that I still do when I negotiate salary with uh, venues, you know, with ticket sales or whatever of guarantee. I never try to get the extra two bucks to, to put them in a place that is uncomfortable. So it's like a place that pays you 50 bucks a night. Let's say they pay 50 bucks a bed a night, right? And let's say they really like you, like, yeah, because we packed the place, like red light. But, uh, you know, seven, we paid a 75, which is more than any other band. Mm-hmm. Could I get, like, how much can I get from them? Tops, 120 bucks, 140 bucks. Right. Like it, it doesn't make any difference in the money. Right. It's basically, right. it's free or close to free. It's not like I can get 2,000 bucks that actually would make a difference in my life. So what's the point of pushing well, to yeah, point? Well, yeah, $10 more a person is not worth being a pain in the ass for the person booking it, right, and making it uncomfortable. Because you're just, that, that would just be the last, I mean, and it's also just... And if you have a bad, one bad night, it's like then it's really like a big deal. And it's over, yeah. And, and the, I mean, the real problem is that uh, for, I think for in the mentality of these of these people that gra- you know that graduate school or are in school and and go into the gig world and look at the money the money somehow to them is symbolic of their worth as people as human beings but it's not it's symbolic of where they are in their career trajectory which is in the beginning of the beginning right so the fact that you're getting paid nothing is symbolic of the fact that you haven't started well, think about if you're going to the new school, okay? That's a great mm-hmm. example. Or oh, Berkeley, but I feel like new school even more. They pump these people up with like, you guys are, New York is the best jazz ever. It's like you're you the next the generation best, of lions. Yeah, you're the best. And then they try to get a gig and all they can get is 50 bucks for the band. Right. And it's just, it doesn't fit. They're like, well, I paid so much money for education. I know so much. I'm one of the top people. Why, why am I getting paid that, that amount of money? Right. right. You're not, it's like they feel like an engineer feels. If you tell them, if somebody finishes engineering school, let's say a uh, computer engineering school, and you tell them you, you, make fifth, <laughs> you make eight bucks an hour to work for Microsoft, they right. will not take the job for eight bucks no, they an will hour. Not. They will not. But anyways, I mean, I think, th- I, just rem- I still remember how, how it felt like any place that would have us no matter what the distance no matter what like if we could make it if we could even break even or in the beginning even before we could break even we kind of broke even like, no we always broke even yeah you know we wouldn't do stuff that was stupid you know I mean I think that's what people I don't want people to listen to this and be like I need to take you know a gig in Alaska and the next day a gig in the Czech Republic and fly myself yeah. there you know it's that's not the idea if if you you got to draw the line between what's a lot of effort uh, and what's what you pay for in energy and what you pay for in money, right? So if financially you can make it just come back to zero and you just have a day you're crossing off the schedule and you're out in the world putting yourself in a place where something can happen, where there's just... The idea is to just keep things in forward motion because in at home nothing happens. It seems like it does, and if you're a YouTuber, maybe it will, uh, but that's not the world we're talking about, right? The world we're talking about is the actual world of making connection, getting, into, getting in front of people and winning uh, emotional and cognitive real estate in the minds of hearts of the people that you're actually doing this for of your audience even if they don't you know and that's the thing about the first five six years of doing the thing every night's an audition right there's nobody knows you beforehand now when we play marvin shows the the audience is the majority of them are there to see us and they know some of us know us really well some of us know some of our youtube stuff some of us i used to get i remember getting nervous in the beginning when we started getting audience to come to our shows more nervous because i got so used to being in the audition part because i was like ah if i got people that don't know me in the room i can make it happen right and when when people knew us it's i felt more pressure yeah because because you're being compared to your very polished recordings Oh, and, and also to the image they have of you in your mind. 
Yeah, so it's a very, you know, you're, you're juxtaposed against uh, something very polished. Luckily for us, our shows are just so much, much better, better than, shows, than yeah. anything else we do. You know, uh, I, I, there is just the hologram of your playing, especially with video. It's some, I always find that with, with, uh, with video, it's more immediate, but much weaker uh in the grand scheme of things like music has uh, m music is much more potent with your eyes closed yeah you know what i mean when you're not seeing the physicality of it being made but you're just letting the melody especially instrumental music you let you let the melodies take you somewhere you can go really deep into this place where you're finding out not not even so much about us and about marvin but you know people really take the trip find out about improvisation about jazz it kind of it sends roots that reach back a long way especially with something you know like us that's connected to uh tradition um and it's very enriching so i think i think um people that listen to our albums get that thing but live uh, like being involved like with things of the moment you know it's just it's a whole other ball game you know you really you really go on a trip together because you know that that's the thing you know we we go on that trip together and at the same time yeah think about uh if you know remember when it was cool to see dragons on uh game of thrones imagine you saw a dragon in real life <laughs> 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 you'd be like that's not the same <laughs> It's not the same feeling at all. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's more impressive in real life. Yeah, you can smell it. <coughs> the For dragons sure. taste like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> dragons and dinosaurs are strangely related. I don't know, I always felt like... Like lizards. It was not very imaginative. Big yeah. lizards, and some of them can fly. Yeah. Anyways, are you excited to go on the road? Uh, no, I no? guess, no, I don't know, I, I never, it takes me a day to get into it, like I'm happy to do it. Yeah, well tomorrow we have a rehearsal, I've actually... I'm not excited for rehearsal because I didn't have time to work on anything, I'm going to try today just to go over some stuff. I went over a few things and I feel like I don't, I'm going to fuck up a lot, but yeah, don't expect it'll be okay. To, don't expect to have a very deal, uh, new set no i mean i feel like it'll be a good a good mix of the old and the new i mean today i'm going to stuff, do yeah. i'm going to do a live feed today and just uh play Walk along to it. our albums yeah that might be a good idea. yeah that's what I, that's what i typically do now i just go on spotify i think it'll be fun i'm the first four days i'm a little bit worried about oh the, the backyard stuff is going to be such a delight yeah just no pressure just hanging out getting high eating good food driving why 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 do we even have a quartet why do we keep That's these exactly guys around I think every time because it's fun to play with music I remember when yeah we played in Sweetwater. i was like oh this music is fun yeah but, this music uh, is fun but it is a pain in the ass now with everything going on yeah yeah it's uh I, i'm i'm very curious to see what covid restrictions are like john just had his second dose yesterday so the three of us are vaccinated don't you have to wait like a week or two before you'll find I, I, I don't care if he gets it no I'm saying thank <laughs> you I'm kidding what are we uh, saying? Uh, yeah I think it's a week if okay. it's a, a week for the Pfizer and Moderna ones I think but yeah so uh, but but I don't know I mean, uh, it, it, looking at Chicago most things are open I'm really praying that some coffee shops are open yeah to where we could sit inside like no, if we we'll all have to hang out in the van no, we'll find some coffee shops the problem is that uh, I feel like we're gonna have less less of them yeah less options I just remember I forgot what being on the road is like I, you know the one thing I, I remember from every day is like how much I want couches yeah, it's coffee like coffee shop is really the best thing in the world when you want to it's the only it, thing it's the only thing yeah it's, it's the only would, thing and we would look at pictures to see if any of them have couches yeah because because a chair man you can't sit in the car and then on a chair all day you need you need to just you need a place to fall a place into. to just fall apart in the day yeah. 
It's like a big leather couch, like the ones that so have the long ones. Actually, oh. I actually like that part of the day when we want to, because you go to a coffee shop, you get coffee, you feel caffeinated, you feel good. Yeah, and very refreshed, just showered in the morning. Oh, yeah. Mike, do, do you, did you hear about mud water? No. What's my, I, I think I've seen, I think they're trying to advertise it for me. Is it like they coffee? They advertise for me all the time. Yeah, but okay. a lot of reviews are bad and it's too expensive for me to try it. Do you want to try it and tell me if it's good? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds sure that if you put it like that. <laughs> I was like, it looks interesting. I was like, I'll go pivot money. I just got a tea. <laughs> How, are we, are we going to exercise on the road? Are we going to work out? Yes. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing yoga every day. You want to do some yoga? Yeah, we're going to do... We'll go to yoga places, though. Not just places? In, yeah, not just do it in the room like homeless people. I, I, got, I got a subscription for a good How thing. How weird is that to say that? that uh, what? In the room, it's like a homeless person. We don't even have a room. <laughs> but for some reason, it makes well, there's sense. Well, soon they're not going to have homeless people. I heard that they're trying to solve it in California. I think this time, I think this time it will this work. This time they're going to do it. I remember being in Mariano's uh, in Bridgeport. But uh-huh. we really didn't have homeless people in Bridgeport somehow. But uh, I don't know why. It makes no sense. But it's like the one place in Chicago that you don't really have homeless people. And, but Mariano's is on the border with another neighborhood. And there was a guy there. And he, his ass was, was, his pants were down and he smelled like shit and piss. I right, mm-hmm. like really bad homeless. And he had a bottle of vodka that he opened and he just started drinking. There, or tequila, doesn't matter. And uh, around him, like a few aisles around where he is, there was this horrible, 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 horrible stench. Okay? Uh-huh. And I was like, I was thinking, yeah, this guy, if you give him a home, it will solve everything. Right. Like if I give him my home, like he will become me. That's, that, the, that's the Louis, the another Louis C.K. joke when he was talking about why the homeless person doesn't kill. Oh, uh-huh. well, that's one thing. But we had this joke about when he sees a homeless person with a head full of hair, he wishes he can change places with him. And <laughs> he could just get his life together, but have Because he get his life together and the guy will just go to shit. That, <laughs> that's, 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 the, that's the point, right? Yeah, so, it's, it's so... I mean... I'm saying Some it's such a pe- band-aid on such a deep level problem that you have to be out of your fucking mind to people to are so naive like people are so naive when it comes to that shit I to mean, people generally yeah yeah I, well but but that problem specifically is such a such an insane problem like you know t- like you, to get you, a committee to study it's like go to well, Fresno you're to solve you're trying to solve the world you're like oh they're homeless we need to give them homes uh, Right. It's like, no, you're solving the world. You're not solving the problem. Like right. The problem is so deep, though, that it's, it's just, how can you solve it? it? No matter how many hours I spent in the car thinking about it and we were talking about it, the only thing I could ever come up with is you need to somehow figure out how to make less homeless people. But right. once they're homeless, they're done. That's, yeah. that's, really, that's really the only thing I could come up with. I mean, no, I, I'm, sure there, I'm sure there are... Yeah, there, that's the thing we keep coming back to. I mean, there are some, there's a percentage of them that, sh- that are victims of circumstances, not on drugs, not, not anything, or, you know, that, that maybe there's a ray of hope for and, and a chance thing could happen and, you, and the whole thing could be turned around. But like this thing that, that was the kind of, we've talked about this in the podcast before, I'm sure, but, uh, that, you know, to have like these, when you look at like Jack Kerouac type hobos, drinking right it took him like winos, the fall yeah. yeah winos like they would fist fight and they were really rough around the edges and they fucked up their home and their family and now they're on the street but that that whole descent took uh 35 years yeah till they got to this place the terrible place too well they're the husk yeah they're a, a, a shell of a, a shell, a shell, shell of, of a person, person yeah. a person uh, empty suit hollow right husk, uh, yeah. Yeah, hollow, hollow people uh but uh with, with drugs, meth, with, with meth, meth and crap three and months, no else. teeth, just fucking it's your it's sister. Not a, you're not a person anymore. Yeah, it's, it's just. It's, it's, and listen, we know people. Uh, you can mention names, I guess, if you want to, but we know more than one person like that. That mm-hmm. we thought had a lot of talent. Mm-hmm. Okay, we saw a bunch of those people, 
a lot of talent and to make them walk and be consistent on their talent mm-hmm. it's like it's just it's impossible no matter how much we try to help those people do, do you know what I mean of so, course and and most people are not as far gone it's like dude, it's not very easy to get somebody because you have to it has to come from within if a person has to get his own shit together you can't get somebody's shit together for them that's the yeah. hardest part you know and that's the hardest part I feel like when you know um My, my, I see some of my nieces and nephews and if some, one of them has an issue that they go, you know, now that they're a little bit older, it's mm-hmm. like that's the hardest part because you can't get their shit together for them. Right. You have to somehow put them in a place where they can get their shit together, but it's not that obvious. I know a lot of people, not just that have talents, I know a lot of people, uh, my, you met uh, uh, Elliot, the guy that mm-hmm. worked for my sister for a while. Yeah, really into video games, right? Yeah, and it's just destroyed his life over and over again. Yeah. Like he can't get his shit together. And you, it doesn't matter what situation you put him in. And he's a smart guy. Mm-hmm. He's, he works hard. But then he just goes into this hole where the, he's like, fuck the world. Let it burn down. I'm just going to be playing video games for three weeks in a row. Not mm-hmm. sleep, not do anything, not see anybody. So it's like you can't get people's shit together for them. And yeah. it's, it's, it's just... Dude, how many times do you have to learn this lesson? Well, I mean, uh, there's... You know, I feel like in, certainly in my private lessons, I would say 50 percent of my students are, are guitar students that are totally motivated, you know, want to just pick up some information for me, maybe about stuff we've done, maybe about jazz in general. And then another 50 percent come to me for self-help. They just they're in a place where they don't understand why they're stuck, right? And the one thing that I see all the time is in, it, that's really a flaw in the calculation is uh, how people miscalculate uh, not, no action, right? Because it's like they think like, oh, like, you know, yeah, but it's like so much work to actually sit down and learn these modes, right? It's like, oh, like, you know, yeah, like, I don't know, like melodic minor, like I learned... The major scale over the guitar but the one thing that's really hard to articulate to somebody is if you stop the forward mer- motion in your growth as a player and at the same time you don't have commercial success like you haven't written a hit that somehow got like you became you know sucked into to a machine for writing a three chord song and now you can because these People that do that, like even at a higher level, like um, that might not have the craziest theoretical understanding of music like John Mayer, his, his trajectory is still advancing, just not in the realm of, of uh, you know, zooming into like the music knowledge in the realm of fashion. And he's going to a nicer club. He's getting a nicer house. He has forward trajectory in his life. He's banging 20 chicks a night, right? He's, Now 25. Now 25. Now yeah. 25, it's yeah. like, you know, he, he has forward motion in the, in the game that he is playing, which music is a compartment in, but music isn't the whole thing. If your game is to play deeper and deeper music and you stop acquiring or you haven't acquired the necessary tools, the price you pay for not acquiring these tools adds up with time. The songs that you are playing currently and the way you are playing them seem more and more boring. Music seems more and more pointless. Every day, the whole thing you're doing seems more and more empty. You know? and, and it's just because you've severed your growth and, and kind of haven't acquired the appropriate lens to see the next step through. Right? So you're, you're the one sticking yourself in place because you just don't, can't, fi- can't muster the energy to take the next logical step from where you're at. And, it, the, and it's so obvious to locate the next step. But people don't want to, to realize where they are in their like, music understanding jur- you know, journey. Do you not understand harmony? Right? Look up how chords are made. Do you get that? Look up some other chords. Look what chords are in the songs. Look up how chords interact with the available notes. See what the people you like, how they play, what those notes are. S- then you see a layer of rhythm. Right? It's like there's always... If you're locating where your knowledge stops, where your understanding stops, you can always find the next step. The same goes with skill. Can you play that kind of line? 
Can you play that kind of subdivision? Can you play that arpeggio? Right? If you can, can you do it in context? Can you do it at this tempo? But, you know, people just don't, um, don't bring themselves through that, through that process. And it's so slow, you know, that, and every day is such a little drop in a bucket that uh, you know you you would i yeah, think the now, idea now of doing go out but going out and playing shows playing whatever playing on the street getting with people it's it's tough it's really hard dude getting a band together or getting even just people to jam with you nowadays it's really hard it's like it yeah. used to be easier because there was nothing to do now you have your phone so to get people to actually come out and do something It's difficult. I'm not saying to bring people to shows, which is impossible. I'm just saying just to get them to jam. Dude, I moved to Milwaukee, and I, was, I, hit, I hit up a few piano players because I have a piano at home, and I could not get somebody to play piano. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that if I would take my... Uh, if I would go for people that are even worse, I might find somebody. But right. like, it's amazing to me that I had to do more than reach out and be like, hey, dude, want to come jam? Right. You yeah, know, it, it's just, yeah, this, it's t- in this world, you know, in the, the one of the first stories in the Bible, he said uh, in Hebrew, it means that uh, you're going to have to sweat to eat bread. That's what God said to, yeah. to Adam. That was his punishment. And that's really the punishment. You have to fucking sweat to eat. That, that's just how it goes. And, yeah. you know, and a lot of people, dude, how many people do you know like that? That get into something new and are super excited And because new stuff is like it's amazing and you just get so much headway in the beginning right mm-hmm. you're like oh I need a website I need that and everything you do is such a huge difference and then after two months we're like Ugh, fuck it I just decided to whatever <laughs> yeah uh, and, and I can have so many ex- examples well I mean I think I think the real the real problem when you're trying to build technique from scratch or something like that is that it's not it's it's First of all, I know very few people who are able to do projects like you're describing, like two-month projects. But the kind of work that it would take to get to your level in saxophone playing is setting a goal. You know, it's more, in- it's more intense of a project than the most intense project most people do most of their lives, which is like, you know, a thesis, right? Was, like a, I, I, a I two-year project. To, yeah, I was just talking to a guy, that, uh, to a friend that did uh, ju- uh, training jiu-jitsu for six months. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he said after he said after six months of training hard and of getting injured I would go over and still everybody would kick my ass so I just got a concealed permit yeah you know and I and I can see it right because I'm at the six months point again I, I'm going to keep doing it just because I'm, I'm so into it but it's at least for now I'm really into it but also I was always like that since I was a baby do you know what I mean I could just see getting I could see, into things and doing them seriously I could do something for I don't have a problem doing something that takes forever I know me too I mean I, I've been practicing singing for two hours a day and yoga for like an hour a day for the last six months you know no, just I, you know, it's, it's like that but I'm saying that's like and those are things I don't really enjoy doing I just feel yeah. like I need to and I That, that's not even a part of the fun part of my day where I do things that, that I like doing, right? Yeah, that's just know, the it, discipline part. I remember I was explaining to almost every student I had about my journey and about how when I got out of the army, I couldn't play anything because I stopped playing for three years. Um, mm-hmm. There was no time to play when you were in the army. And I could barely make a sound. And I had no technique. And when I would practice every day, uh, like a Nazi, from 7 a.m. till... 10, 11 p.m. and just start with a stopwatch and take 15 minute break every 45 minutes and then take half an hour for breakfast, an hour for lunch and half an hour for dinner. And other than that, I would practice from again 7 to 10 or 7 to 11 every day. Yeah. And, at the end, and after six, seven, eight months of that, which is a lot, if you add it up, I still sure. fucking sucked and had no technique. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like, that's music. It's, like, it's not like I'm telling you, dude, you're gonna put... And that's more time than anybody... You know, other than somebody like you would put in. Right. So it's like you... And that's what people don't understand. You do that and you're still not good. No. That's I mean, how impossible it is. Well, well, you're not good, but you can do something. You know what well, I mean? You like, you're, you're, you're better than you were. And... Uh, well, you were in a pos- I was in a position to at least 
start you know playing and evolving and have some basics obviously it's not like I I was at point zero if I was sure. what I practice wouldn't have been good but I was in a complete I was in a completely different place by the end of it but the place that I was wasn't like oh my god now I can play it was like oh Jesus I still suck yeah. <laughs> that's how I was you know I still yeah. need to work so yeah I don't know it's uh you gotta have some uh the question is you know what 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 can you tell somebody who who doesn't have that in them you know to not do it I would just right. don't do it you know I would say you know what I would say really mm. if I would talk to somebody that's 17 I would say that depends what style of music you want to play but let's say you want to play rock or pop or something I'll be like hey do it full time for three years, four years tops, five years tops. And if you break through and you become famous in those five years, great. If not, go, go to something else. You're still young. Right. Again, I started when I was 21. You can start when you're 22. In Israel, people start when, you know, go to the army until 21. Some of them go until 22. Then uh, 23. Then they take a yeah. year off or a year and a half or two years off to go to a, like a big trip. Um, you know, and then they come back and start school at 25, 26. That's when people start college. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, instead of, you know, you don't have to do the army, you're in, you're in the States, go, go for it. And if it doesn't happen, it just It stop. doesn't happen. Right. But that, that's all of it. Like, just, just stop. You gave it all you got. But this uh, idea that if you'll play another coffee shop and another coffee shop and another coffee shop, like... And it's not the opposite. If people are listening, we're like, oh, it's the opposite of what you said about the drops. No, because we're not plain pop. Right. You know? I'm not in under the illusion that I'm going to be, gonna be rich from fusion. Yeah, and, and man. Yeah, somebody's going to pick me up. It's amazing, like, the, the thing, the thing that, that is to play jazz now or to play fusion. And when you're trying to be kind of a standalone thing that's doing whatever aesthetically seems pleasing to us which is you know fringe that's an understatement to say that it's fringe for a lot of people um every day you are struggling for not even struggling you are the only one in the world that's propagating your existence you know what i mean you are like a little flame and every day you just kind of dump another kind of uh, shovel full of coal to keep that fire alive. And the moment you stop, it stops. Like if I stop and you stop pushing this thing, it's dead. It's dead. There's no, and it would, and that was true for at any stage of the of the well, process. It, was, it used to be even worse because when we put out um, our third album. Last Chapter of Dreaming, which was, I think, a good album, and Breaking the Cycle is a good album. You know, it's already, like, second and third album, and even the first one is kind of cool. That's cool. Definitely had great moments in it. It's, if we stopped then, nobody would have known it. Nobody. Like, close to zero people yeah. would have known it. So, yeah, yeah it's just, that's, that's what happens. But when your journey is in, into music, then at least you get all the other rewards. Right. But if it's... Uh, Young people, yeah, I feel, I feel, feel bad for them. And, you know, I feel worse for people that are our age, which sometimes talk to me and ask me about advice, how to get to our spot, place, and I tell them, and I was like, Dude, you cannot, you can't be 35 and do what we did at 22 or 25. Right. It's, it's, it's like, you can't physically and you can't mentally, it just won't work. Well, it's not saying that you won't have any success. It's saying that you're going to have to take a, a road that's so different that we can't think of it. Because we did awesome. everything we could. Also, the world is different. Yeah. I mean, but we did what we thought would work at the time we did it. And things were growing around us simultaneously. Like Facebook, all that stuff was one way. And uh, we just played the game as it was handed to us, you know. And we still do that. Okay. We should probably wrap up, even though it's just been an hour, uh, because we have a mixing session that already started that we need to join electronically. Okay, um, the next one we're gonna start doing it on the road. That's yeah, we're gonna do. We're gonna record some episodes now from a backyard tour. So the next couple of ones, I'm hoping to be, at least, I'm hoping my judgment to be severely impaired next I time. I have to I say record. that last tour was very disappointing. Like we had a, 
a lot of fun, but it was very disappointing as far as weight intake. Yeah. Well, we had a lot of, a lot of driving, so it was just not an opportunity. No, we didn't get as many edibles. That's true. Hopefully, we'll get more edibles. All righty, guys. For the entire universe. Oh, we also need uh, Adiwal edibles. <laughs> <laughs> for some, for some I don't think this is like a good place for that. Why not? <laughs> All right, fuck it. Yeah. Do you want uh, us to die in a crash, everybody? Or do you want us to concentrate on the, on the drive? <laughs> Yeah, we're going to do fun. some studying, we promise. All right. It's not so, like, it's uh, not like uh, we abuse it. We use no. it. Yeah, I don't use have a it, problem. Don't abuse it. That's right. <laughs> All right. So uh, get our music at uh, <laughs> marbinmusic.bandcamp.com. Uh, and finance our drug habit. We <laughs> go to facebook.com slash marvinmusic uh, and subscribe to this podcast. Tell your friends about it. It's growing and we're very happy. We're, we should get a sponsor. Like can Adderall? Adderall. Is Adderall yeah, a company? The problem, yeah, probably the problem with the problem with do, probably Pfizer. The problem with doing Adderall uh, uh-huh. so non frequently, like I think it's been two years since I took Adderall yeah. last. And yeah, wow, well, at least. I haven't taken Adderall in forever. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah, at least two years. And mm-hmm. I just think that the problem is that you don't know where to get it. Yeah. It's the older you get, the harder it is to get drugs in general. I mean, unless well, we, you're really we, we committed to the class. We used to have a ne- never-ending supply in our band. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah. Never All right. mind. All right. So, on, on, on this positive, positive note, note, yeah. Let's, uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.